government moves ahead with plans to increase excise tax on alcohol and cigarettes from February. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. It is here again, it is here again. The Made in Grenada Expo is here again. And I just hope the whole of Grenada are ready because I sung in a clarion call. The Made in Grenada Expo is here again. The Made in Grenada Expo is on February 7th and the public is encouraged to come out and give full support and buy out all local products on show. Products manufactured right here in Grenada. 100% Grenadian. And it's happening right here at the National Stadium. Are taking in the Independence Parade and the Made in Grenada Expo one time. I am so excited, that's why I'm making a fireside. I bring my tent, my blanket, and all kind of thing. And I'm camping right here until everything's done on February 7th. The Made in Grenada Expo is here again. With the details to the news for Friday, January 20th, I am Rikisha St. Louis. Effective February 1st, the tax on alcohol and cigarettes will increase in accordance with the Excise Tax Act. Members of the lower house on Friday gave support to the resolution presented by Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Honorable Deacon Mitchell, to increase the excise tax on alcoholic beverages and cigarettes. Alcohol will increase from $1.10 and $4.40 per liter to $1.50 and $5 per liter, respectively, and tax on cigarettes from 105% to 200%. This move by government is one of the measures being implemented to raise revenue following several actions taken to manage the cost of living crisis since it assumed office in June 2022. Prime Minister Mitchell is optimistic that the reduction will discourage the excessive use of alcohol and cigarettes. The government should raise revenue by increasing uh, the tax on them uh, to help offset one the other fiscal measures taken uh, by the removal of that on basic items as approved uh, through the budget process. And also, Mr. Speaker, to assist the state with raising the much needed revenue to address the significant health challenges that we face as a nation arising from the abuse of alcohol, which in many cases leads to significant uh, renal failure. Uh, the abuse of cigarettes, which oftentimes lead to significant respiratory uh, illnesses. And so, Mr. Speaker, we are here because while the Minister has the power to uh, draft and sign the SRNO, uh, Section 45.3 of the Excise Tax Act, requires that before that order can be published in the Gazette, that it needs to be passed by affirmative resolution of Parliament. The, the, the measure is not targeted by suggesting that people automatically smoke less or drink less because it's more expensive to do so. We do hope that rational people will in fact take that approach uh, by saying, if I had to spend my limited funds, I'd prefer to spend it on food and clothing and basic necessities for my family rather than on drinking or smoking. Prime Minister Mitchell explained that government has to adopt a comprehensive approach to deal with excessive alcohol and cigarette use. He outlined some possible measures that can be taken, including education and engagement with manufacturers. We must start with education. We must start with communication. We have to have a conversation with the producers, manufacturers, distributors and advertisers of alcohol. There are no regulations governing the advertisement of alcohol. In most countries, you cannot run alcoholic ads at prime time. There are billboards all over the place. There are alcohol signs right next to schools, right next to playing fields. We can go on and on. Mr. Speaker, the Carlton House wasn't destroyed under this administration's watch. It has not been rebuilt. We have indicated that we will do so. Mr. Speaker, our community centers, we are taking them back and making them available to our young men and women so that the positive actions that are required from craft making, from skills training, from skills training and digitization so that they have an avenue to express themselves, 
to learn to grow so that they don't have to turn to alcohol. Government ministers who stood in support of the resolution reiterated government's commitment to do what is necessary to shield citizens from the devastating effects of alcohol and cigarette overuse. It's likely to think twice about the habits. And we encourage people to do that. The less you use these goods and the more you focus on transformation and development of careers, the more brighter will be the future for our Grenada. We have recognized that quite a very large cross-section of the Grenadian population is hooked on these substances, hooked on alcohol, hooked on smoking. This is even present amongst school-age children. And so, as a responsible government, and as responsible leaders, I believe we must support this resolution. I am in full support of the motion, particularly for this reason, to protect or to deter the young and the uninitiated. The plan of the government going forward, which will deal with the Carlton House, the situation among the hospital, as a combined effort in dealing with substance abuse, and addressing the issue of consumption and leading to moderation of consumption of alcohol. Items to be affected by the increase in tax include beers, stout, wines from fresh grapes, spirits distilled by grapes or grape wine, brandy, whiskey, rum, gin, vodka, liqueurs, cigarettes, cigars, tobacco and tobacco substitutes. Members of the Upper House on Friday gave support to government's move to increase the excise tax on alcohol and cigarettes. The resolution was presented by Leader of Government Business in the Senate, the Honorable Adrian Thomas. Senator Thomas described the decision as a message to those who excessively consume alcohol and use cigarettes. In addition, he said numerous activities, including public education, are on the way to support government's move. To send a strong message to the people who are involved in substance abuse. In this instance, we are targeting alcohol and cigarettes. And therefore, while the issue of raising the necessary finances is important, but very important is the question of our health. Mr. Deputy President, we, our intention is to bring this not only to this house, but also to further bring it to the public. We have heard the cry of the nation outside. We have seen the impact that it's, cre it's creating. And while we are in Parliament dealing with the first aspect of it, there are numerous other activities we will be taking up. Senators Salim Rahman, David Andrew, Quince Britton, and Gloria Thomas supported the resolution. We have a lot of alcohol abuse in this country. And I'm very pleased to hear that this government is making steps, taking some steps to do something about it. It's just one step. A lot more needs to be done. Businesses whom I represent cannot function if the employees come to work drunk or if the employees come to work stale drunk because they had to put on shades to work and is sweating, can't work properly. This administration is taking a multi-pronged approach to treating with this issue. Of course, we have to come to discuss this matter because it's a motion, it's a resolution that has to be passed in this place, in this honorable house. But there are several other initiatives 
that don't require being passed here, which will be engaged in by this administration. The statistics presented, Mr. presented Mr. Deputy President, in its volume two of the statistics, indicate that it trends in local drug-related hospital admissions indicate that alcohol is the leading cause of local hospital admissions. We have a responsibility to educate. We need to re-educate people because it seems to be we're in a society whereby we glorify alcohol consumption. We see it, we see all the advertisements and so on during prime time, for example. Um, in some countries, at certain times, prime time and so on, 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 even during, let's say, news time, you don't see no kind of advertisement advertising alcohol and those kind of things. So we have a responsibility also to strengthen our laws and so on because it doesn't matter what price that you set alcohol at. I've, I mean, I've been to many fets. I used to be walking bars and so on. And a bottle of drink or a bottle of alcohol that you normally pay, let's say, $50 for, even if you double or triple the price, someone would still come to buy it. The excessive use of alcohol is one that really wreaks havoc on families. As Minister for Social Development, I can testify of the number of cases of families that come to us impacted by the excessive use of alcohol by one parent or the other, or even sometimes the children in that family. And so I support this resolution full-heartedly because I know that once families are affected and impacted, the whole society becomes dysfunctional. Continuing the news, the Parliamentary Elections Office appeals to Grenadians to scrutinize the published consolidated list to make their claims and objections early to avoid the hassle close to general elections. Voter and Civic Registration Officer Ferdinand Philip told GIS the official consolidated list of electors as of 31st December 2022 will be available for inspection from Tuesday, January 24th. Registered voters have seven days after publication from the 24th to the 31st of January for claims and objections regarding the list. In, I, I think at every publication there are merit, meritorious grounds for objecting to persons, but we tend to wait until an election is in the air and then the office is flooded with the, these objections. And of course, persons do not allow the process to go through. They hit the, the airwaves, the, the media, and they make you know, sometimes outlandish claims. And you know, it makes the office look bad. And secondly, we, we then have to spend time trying to do damage control, whereas we should be focused on delivering whether, it, whether it's an election or a referendum as the case may be. So our principal goal here today is to, is to really impress upon the general public. Whenever a list is posted, whether it is a consolidated list or a, a um, addendum list, that persons scrutinize those two lists. The list can be found in each parliamentary office, constituency offices, at post offices, police stations, medical stations, and other public places. Philip says two consolidated lists are published annually. We publish every year two consolidated lists and two um, addendas. The addendas, again, just by way of reminding, only the names of persons who got registered in the, the, the prior three months, and the consolidated, all of the names of the persons registered within a constituency. So. A consolidated is coming out, as I said, um, at the end, well, next week, Tuesday. Um, another consolidated would come out reflecting a registration up to the end of June this year. Um, it will come out very early in, in July, because it takes a little time, of, uh, about two weeks to actually put together, but it reflects registration 
up to the end of um, July, up to the end of June of this year. This is the National Report. The news will continue after the break. I think I've decided. I want this one. Excuse me. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. Can you tell me why it is you decided to purchase this fridge? Sure, because it's a lot cheaper, looks good, and if I should say, does the same job as all the others. I see. Can I show you something? No problem. See what the sign says? It said this appliance uses natural refrigerants. So... This refrigerator uses green cooling technology with natural refrigerant, which is environmentally friendly and is not harmful to the environment and the ozone layer. Equipments like these will greatly reduce the electricity bill, last longer, perform better, and protect the environment. And will give you the peace of mind in knowing that you are doing your part in creating a more environmentally responsible world for current and future generations. So you're telling me that this fridge right here may cost a little more now, but I can save on my electricity bill? It will perform better and last longer than this other one and have all the things you just said? Oh yeah. Remember, when purchasing an AC or refrigerator for your home or business, be sure to ask for the one that uses natural refrigerants. Go green. Let's be Welcome back. G Cruise has presented Nawasa with three flow measurement devices, which will help improve its data collection capability. We get more in this Janelle Rubin report. Three electromagnetic discharge measurements with accessories were handed over to the National Water and Sewage Authority, Nawasa, on Tuesday, 17 to January. The devices, which include three flow measurement instruments along with three tablets, were procured under the Climate Resilient Water Sector in Grenada G Cruise Project and will support Nawasa's river flow data collection. The total value of the device is $64,629.58. The items were procured under the G Cruise Project subactivity, piloting improvement of data availability and data management for discharge measurements at rivers and streams. Making the presentation on behalf of G Cruise, head of project Marian Geis, says the devices are a major boost not only for Nawasa, but also for the future Water Resource Management Unit, WRMU, under the G Cruise project, which will require data from Nawasa to aid in its operation. I'm very pleased that today we received the electromagnetic flow meters that we're handing over today to Nawasa to support the data management or data collection that is required for an accurate water resource management, which later on by the new water resource management unit will be used to um, set the basis for providing the water that we need also in the stress of climate change. Receiving on behalf of NOASA, General Manager Mr. Christopher Husbands expressed the organization's appreciation for the devices while highlighting the importance of effectively managing the island's water sources. Clearly, the Water Resource Management Unit and the whole development of water resources in Grenada is an area of focus for us. If we don't manage the resources well, we won't have water to produce or distribute. So the entire system has to be integrated. And clearly, um, this is one of the areas that is a focus of the G crews. And we are pushing ahead to ensure that we can implement all aspects of the project as quickly as possible. Training will be held with treatment plant operators on the effective use of the devices, downloading the data from the logger and updating their internal processes. Also benefiting from the electromagnetic discharge measurements will be the future water resource management unit. The unit will be established under the G-Cruise project to support the integration of climate resilience into Grenada's water sector governance. The WRMU will rely on hydrological and climate change data from relevant ministries and agencies. By strengthening the treatment plant operators of NOASA in data collection and management, 
The WRMU will get a sound base for decision-making in regards to Grenada's water resources. Reporting for the G Cruise Project, I am Janil Rubin. That story just ended the national report for Friday, January 20th. Let's recap the top story. Government moves ahead with plans to increase excise tax on alcohol and cigarettes from February. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us.